Okay, I'm working on my 96 Road King and the previous owner replaced the clutch, but he had a problem that you could not uh, fully free spin. Clutch lingo is kind of backwards than people naturally think. So engaged clutch means you're driving down the road. Disengaged means you're coasting and you're sitting in at a stop although human beings think like when you yank on the clever that's when you're doing something that's when you're engaging but it's actually the other way around anyway so what I figured out was you, you couldn't fully disengage the clutch by pulling the clutch in so literally at a light the bike would be like uh, 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 it'd be trying to push it on you and you could never get it into first I'm sorry, into neutral. You'd have to literally, if you wanted to, sometimes you could do it if you coasted down at, you know, five, two miles an hour and click, get it real quick. Then you could have it in neutral at a light. Otherwise, it had just enough thumping pressure on it, you know, at 800,000 RPM, whatever your idle is, and it would prevent it from pulling into neutral. Click. So... What I figured out was uh, this adjustment screw is so delicate that it requires almost a baby's touch to figure out when you're touching that push rod. There's a push rod that runs all the way through here and comes over to the other side. Now, I just told you all the boring stuff that anyone could tell you, but here I'm actually going to show you some real stuff. So here's the ball and ramps. I have it pulled off and the problem was the guy before me he adjusted it and he started so here it's fully down and flat what happened is he started his adjustments with it slightly forward and it could never then when you pull the clutch in it could never fully go its length it, it's about a I don't know about a quarter of an inch in there it looks like that don't quote me on that but these these rampant balls they need the maximum range in order to disengage that clutch and push that push rod there's a little star wheel right there this go this little bearing kind of goes inside this area right there so they made up, and when you yank the lever, it pushes on that uh, with force. And it comes through a push rod. That push rod comes and touches, well it's touching, it's riding against the backside of this adjuster screw all day, every day anyway. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So you don't have to take yours apart. Oh, look at there. Bada bing, bang, boom. There's the push rod. You want to see the push rod? Here, I'll show it to you. This, bingo. That is the push rod that you were pushing. When you yank in the clutch, this comes from that side over there. And it comes this way. And it pushes against. Let's gently put this back in. Sorry, I'm shooting the camera one-handed. Okay, he goes back in. It pushes against this, the back side. See, it's got a little detent in there. I'm going to put this back in. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. There we go. It's nice and easy, smooth. So normally, I got lucky that that, I, I had just enough oil in there and, and I had pushed on it to where it just kind of came with me when I pulled this out. I guess it kind of stuck to the end of this. So you adjust this down. There's a lock nut that goes on. You can watch all kinds of videos on the internet about adjusting the clutch. But my, my goal here was to show you that this plate right here, once this is all locked down, it pushes this entire clutch basket out. And then that's what lets the primary chain back here then free spin because 
whenever this thing is running, that chain is moving 100% of the time. It is always spinning. And in fact, the flywheel does too. So it's always moving, always moving. But when you pull in the clutch here, that's when you get this main shaft. There's, there, it's all knurled in there, just like a drive shaft. So there's teeth on it. And when you pull that clutch in, which means disengage the clutch, it's like backwards, but then this stops moving. So when you let the clutch out, whoo, 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 this starts spinning then. And that's you going down the road. You pull the clutch in, this stops spinning. But this all keeps going because this is connected to the primary right here. This is called your compensating sprocket. This is compensator sprocket. This is connected to your crankshaft. So this is always running while the engine's running. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure you get proper adjustment. It's a little looser when it's cold than it is when it's hot. Once it heats up, this uh, uh, tightens up. My guess is probably the compensating sprocket is the one that heats up and expands, but it could either, both could expand and heat up. And when that heats up, it actually the chain tightens. So do not make this too tight during cold. Your field service manual, which is right here, will tell you exactly how to do it. Now, since I said field service manual, you can probably figure out how old I am. Anyway, so you can see right there, I've got that bungeed up. Otherwise, it'd be flopped down, lay on the ground when I've got pulled out. But there's the ramps and there's that little mechanism. So you can see them right there. Now, let me walk around. Here's one disassembled. Actually, this was the factory. So it sits in there like this. So watch this. Oh, disregard the tools falling. Okay. So it's laying flush right now. That's what the balls look like. They're in these little pockets. This one's got some grime and stuff in there, which is why I replaced it. Sorry for the camera. I'm wiping something off with my hand. So when that clutch is seated, it seats about like right in this, I think it's this position. There's a little key right here that sits right over here. That's how they go together and then here's the arm. So here's the key on the bottom. It's keyed in. This thing does not move at all. It is like anchored, like stone. This one is the one that moves. So when you pull the clutch in, it pulls forward like this. And when it pulls forward, I'm gonna hold it in the pull forward motion. Look at the gap. See the gap? It's a bigger gap. When I let off, you let the clutch out, it then flattens out and thus stops pushing on this. This is why when you do not have the clutch pulled in and you hit the starter, you are going to look like a clown in front of all your friends because your bike is going to lurch forward and you're going to look like an idiot. When you pull that clutch in, this comes forward and it lifts that ramp just enough to push this in Sorry. To push on that and push the clutch so it'll free spin. This is super smooth. It's brand new. This is one of the V-Twin Company version. I'm just goofing around right now. So anyway, technique. So when the clutch, when adjusting the clutch, this has to be all the way back and flat. Problem is, when you have this bolted on, you can't see jack shit of what's going on in there. Nothing. So, you won't know if this is seated all the way here or if it's like over in a partial pull 
while the cable is at rest. That is the theory that I have about my previous owner, is it was, it was partially ramped. Just wiping off that little thing. So, what I found was, by taking one hand, I can't do it right now because I've, I'm kind of shooting a video one-handed here. I reached my right arm over the bike, touched my index finger to this, my other hand, my left hand on this, and I was adjusting it. And sure enough, just each little twist just moves this, you know, just fractions of an inch, you know, millimeters. So it is nice in contact, it is solid, it is moving, everything's working great, no binding. It was this that was the problem. So here's the technique, here's the magic, and here's why you love this video. In order to ensure you will not be able to see this when you've got this cover installed, but in order to make sure this is all the way seated, what you can do is start your adjustments have the clutch lever. Let me come around here. Have the clutch lever all the way out. Not in. Out. Fully out. Make sure that is all the way tight right there. As tight as you can get it. Closed. Make sure your cable adjuster is completely seated, all flat, no gaps, none, boom, tight, everything. For mine, that put the ramp down at the very, very bottom, seated. Now what you can do is also, if you had a problem, and like I said, you won't be able to see this because this is closed, and what you can do is then take your fingers, spin that, until not just gently spin it till it touches the push rod actually tighten it with your fingers hard and make sure that it is at the very lowest setting you will not be able to use finger strength to get that clutch to go in so don't worry about that but you want to make sure that that adjuster goes to its complete end because what you want to make sure is that ramp you're basically trying to force that ramp into its closed uh, position. It's outermost position, which really means it's closed the most. So you can force it with your fingers. Then you can start your proper adjustment with all those videos on the internet. All right. Hope that helps. Later.